So carrying on with linear patterns, we just looked at how to make the rule, and again, just to recap that. Um, first thing we did was identify a table for ourselves with the pattern number and the number of matchsticks needed. We filled that in, we found that our first difference was constant, plus two every time. So it was going to be a linear pattern. So we started with n is equal to my first difference times the pattern number, plus some thing I wasn't sure of, and looking in, I know that I need a plus one to get my pattern to actually match what's in my table um, by plugging that in. So two times the first pattern gives me two, and I need to have three matchsticks total, so I needed a plus one. So my rule becomes n equals 2p plus one. Now there's usually a couple other steps involved in this that they ask you to now use the rule or use the information out of your table. So if I asked you to plot this rule, um, and I give you a axes here with the pattern number across the bottom. Remember, similar to x and y. The number of matchsticks is going vertically there, that's your n. I would go ahead and label my axes. One, two, three, four, five. And here, hmm, maybe I will just label them as I go. So, pattern number one. I know that I need three, so one, two, three. And pattern number two, I've got two and five, so pattern number two, I need five matchsticks, four, five. Pattern number three is going to be up six, seven. And you'll see here that you are getting what sort of pattern forming here. You're getting a nice straight line happening, so 7, 9, 11. Um, now obviously, if you do this on graph paper, you'll get your scales to match nicer, but more or less, you've got the idea. Um, I am getting a nice linear pattern here because my first difference is constant. I am seeing that the dots, if I was going to connect them, they'd make a nice straight line, telling me that the number of matchsticks I needed between each pattern increases by the same amount. So each time I build a new pattern, I'm adding two new matchsticks. I'm adding the same amount every single time. As you can see here with the yellow, plusing two, adding two, adding two, adding two. So on our table, or on our graph, we should see it goes up by plus two every single time as well. Now there's a little hint here. Um, often people see dots and they want to connect them. Okay, but in this case, dots only. No line on graph. And why is this? This is what we call a discrete graph. So discrete meaning whole objects in a way. So matchsticks, you can have one matchstick or you can have two matchsticks or you could have three matchsticks, but you wouldn't have 1.2735 of a matchstick. It's just nonsensical. Like, yeah, somebody could cut it very carefully and give you an exact fraction of a matchstick, but what would be the point of that? Why would you ever want it? So think about it. You want matchsticks if you're going to be building things or lighting fires with matchsticks. You just want a whole matchstick. And that's what's going on here. We don't want the ones in between. So on our graph, we're going to include the whole numbers here. So the one, the two, the three. If I was to put a line between these and connect them, don't do it on yours, but just as an example here, that means that I could possibly be asking for a, you know 1.15 of a matchstick for these numbers in between 1 and 2. But that's not possible. It's not possible for us to build a pattern with you know 3 quarters of a matchstick. So a couple of things to notice here. It doesn't start at 0 because there's no point in building the first pattern or the 0th pattern. And in this case it is dots because it is what we call discrete or whole objects. So things like matchsticks, you know, or balls or cubes or numbers of airplanes, things like that are going to be the dots for us. The only time that you'll end up getting a straight line, we'll see some examples of this later on, is if you're dealing with things like money or time, because it, it is likely that if you're timing somebody running a race, you might get any of those variables in between, any of the continuous numbers between one and two, for instance. Or with money, you might have two dollars, but you could easily have two dollars and fifty-three cents if you wanted as well. So if you're dealing with whole objects that you wouldn't want to break in half, um, make sure that you are doing just the dots on the graph and not a line in between them. So that's quite important.